My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today's video is entitled Ketotifen, a quiet ally for mast cell healing. So we don't talk enough about the role that mast cells play in human health. They're often described as the sentinels of the immune system, the first responders that detect threat and spring into action. But what happens when these sentinels overreact, when the alarm bell rings constantly, even in the absence of danger. Now that is the world of mast cell activation, a world of unpredictable rashes, hives, gut issues, dizziness, temperature swings, fatigue, and even anaphylaxis. It is a condition that can be deeply distressing, difficult to diagnose, and even harder to manage. And one of the problems I have is, you know, I see a lot of patients with POTS, dysautonomia, and they often say, look, we get these symptoms, and when we've looked online, they could be in keeping with something called mast cell activation syndrome. And can you test us out for this? And the problem is, we don't know enough about it. And sp now, there may be, there are experts out there, but I'm not like a proper expert. So, I didn't really know enough about mast cell activation syndrome and the tests and the specialized labs and the intricacies of how you take the tests and how you take the bloods, etc. So I didn't know any of that. Uh, and so what I've tried to do is said, OK, well, why don't we just treat it as if it's mast cell activation syndrome and see what happens if you get better? Well, that's where you want to be, because otherwise these are expensive tests. A lot of them are not available on the NHS, so you end up paying privately for them. And rather than spend a ton of money having lots and lots of tests to look for this, why not just try some treatment? And this is where the focus of today's talk comes in. I want to talk about a little known medication called ketotifen. What is ketotifen? Ketotifen is an antihistamine, but it's not just any antihistamine. It belongs to a rare group of drugs called mast cell stabilizers. It works not just by blocking the effect of histamine, but by actually preventing mast cells from releasing histamine in the first place. That means it helps at the root, not just at the branches. So originally it used to be used for asthma and allergies, and then ketotifen has found a quiet resurgence in people with mast cell activation syndrome, MCAS, POTS, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and chronic fatigue syndromes, all conditions where mast cells may be playing a subtle but significant role. So how does ketotifen work? Ketotifen acts on mast cells, stabilizing their membranes and reducing degranulation. That means less histamine release, less inflammation, and more predictably, predictability for the patient. But it also has antihistaminic properties, blocking H1 receptors, which gives it dual benefit. Over time, with regular use, and that can be once daily or twice daily, people will often report fewer allergic flares, better gut tolerance, calmer skin, improved tolerance to temperature or environmental triggers. It's slow acting, therefore not an instant fix, but for the right patient, it can be life-changing. In terms of dosing and tolerance, in the UK, ketotifen is usually started at one milligram at night, and it may be increased cautiously. It has a sedating effect, which is why bedtime dosing is typical, though some people actually find this helps with their sleep. Side effects can include drowsiness, which often improves after a few weeks, dry mouth, and occasionally weight gain or appetite stimulation. Compared to other mast cell stabilizers, one of which is chromalin sodium, ketotifen is often better tolerated and easier to access. Who might benefit? I guess I often think of ketotifen in people with unexplained rashes or hives, recurrent allergic symptoms without a clear allergen, GI symptoms, gastrointestinal symptoms with food intolerances, POTS with flushing or histamine related flares, chronic fatigue with seasonal worsening or allergic overlays. 
It's not a cure, but it can calm the tide. Uh, what does research say? Well, there was a paper by Moldring et al. in 2011 that highlighted its role in MCAS as both effective and well tolerated. There have been small case series which have noted benefit in autonomic patients with mast cell traits, and it is widely used in Europe and Canada for allergic asthma, where mast cell involvement is prominent. But truthfully, much of its value comes from clinical experience, from listening to patients, from noticing patterns. So when I have patients with POTS dysautonomia, I try them on ketotifen empirically. And, you know, many patients will come back and say, oh, that ketotifen, it was, that was a pleasant surprise. I sleep a bit better. My gut is better. My allergic reactions have calmed down. So I think ketotifen is a really interesting agent. I have experience of having used it. I have not really experienced much in the way of side effects other than drowsiness. And, you know, patients seem to benefit. So in medicine, we're often sometimes drawn to the, to where we're often drawn to the loudest therapies, the newest trials, the biggest names. But sometimes healing comes from the quiet allies like ketotifen that gently, faithfully, day after day, tip the scales back towards balance. And in a world where inflammation, reactivity and uh, overwhelm seem a rule, a bit of stability can feel like peace. So if you've not tried ketotifen, do talk to your doctor about whether you may be eligible for it if you have POTS or chronic fatigue syndrome or autonomic dysfunction because ketotifen may just make you feel a bit better. All right, I hope you found this useful. I would love you to hear your thoughts. If you've tried ketotifen, please do uh, leave a comment below because um, it is true, you know, the lived in experience of patients that other patients may feel, may gain some confidence in wanting to try it. Uh, and once again, thank you so much. I always appreciate the time you give to listening to me.